Hello, people of the internet. My name is Adam. I am going to be showing you some audio production related stuff. If you don't know what this is, this is the, uh, well, Debbie Staff Bites Fame on Audio Producer does, or a producer, as they're often known. They will take sounds or, well, they might create sounds from scratch, you never know. But essentially their job is to make good noise or noise that fits the purpose. For example, in a film, you may hear an explosion. A producer has made that explosion sound good by possibly using hardware to simulate, sorry, using software to simulate it, or possibly by recording an explosion from a distance with a microphone. Either way, the producer has made that sound. They have made it sound the way it does. They have edited it so it sounds appropriate for a film. Another thing an audio producer might do is, or will do, in fact, is music. They will record with a band a song and then make it sound the way it does. So, producers have quite a hefty task. They are, well, every, every sound that you get in, in media pretty much goes through a producer. So I'm going to be showing you or introducing you to how you can get started in doing some audio producing related stuff, whether you want to be a music producer or maybe a film sound producer or maybe a voice actor. That's how I first got into it. But I'm going to be showing you how to do it. So I am going to, all these demonstrations are going to be done with this piece of software here, Reaper. It is available for PC and Mac. Um, you could also run it in Linux using Wine or whatever, or VirtualBox or VMware. Um, but I'm going to be doing this tutorial on PC. So load up Reaper. You'll get this. Um, this is, I'm not using a licensed version currently. I am obtaining a license very shortly, um, but it says I've only been using it for 22 days. I've actually been using it for more like five years. It's just I recently upgraded my computer. So um, this is similar to WinRAR. You just press still evaluating and you'll forever be able to evaluate it. So this is a good bit of software as you can use it freely for as long as you want. However, I would recommend purchasing it if you like it because it is a very good bit of software. Some people will say it's not as good as some of the big boys like Pro Tools and Logic. And I have used both Pro Tools and Logic. I use Logic on a daily basis and I'm yet to find something that Logic can do that Reaper can't. I'm not so familiar with Pro Tools. In fact, there are several things that uh, Reaper can do so far that I have not been able to do in Logic. So... Yeah, you know, don't don't think because it's this is like thirty quid. Don't think because it's cheap. It's a crap bit of software. It's really not. It is honestly good. Very professional piece of software, and you, yeah, you get a lot of bang for your buck. So, let me explain what you are seeing here. So, first off, I'm going to explain to you what each what each bit. This is, I think. Yeah, this is how it looks when it, when you first download it. I've not changed the theme. You can change the theme. Might go into that later if people are interested. But for the most part, I'm going to be using... Well, this is the theme I always use, and it's the default. Um, actually, I'll just show you what I mean by theme quickly. Whoops. If you go down the themes here, you see... You can press that, you can change how it looks. An interesting feature. One of the features Logic doesn't have doesn't mean it's hugely useful, but you can pick your preference. That one's very white and is actually giving me a headache so i'll just go back to default now on the left here this box here this is where your tracks will appear so if i i'm just going to bung in a track you don't need to do this but you see here i have a track and if i had another track that'll appear here and if i had another track that'll appear here and so on you add tracks and they appear here. They also appear down here. I'll explain that in a second. Um, we'll go through what all of these buttons do in a later video. 
but for we're just doing like an introduction here uh you can kind of like do if you drag that up there you see you can put that into a folder another thing that logic can't do or it might actually be able to do that now but i know it definitely never used to be able to do it because i've been using logic 9 so yeah that's what that does that's where all your tracks are we'll explain what that does in a minute here this is your workspace this is where you will see all your audio and all your midi files again we'll get into that later down here you have your oh wait i should say this thing first this is um i don't really know what the name for it is to be honest uh you've got your buttons that control the workspace so you press play and it plays whatever your audio is you've got um your record for hit and record various other control buttons i'm sure you know what these do you've got your repeat button um your automation thing we'll get into that much later uh you've got your your uh things what they called i'm sure there's a name for it you've got your time and your bar number so you see as you press play that's how long it's been playing that's the bar number you're on so bar three bar four beat one beat two beat three beat four beat one beat two beat three beat four so on so that's what that does um here you've got your bpm it's got a tap tempo thing so i've just tapped that twice and it's gone up to 155 uh you can also edit it like that just by typing into it you've got your time signature and you've got your playback rate so you can speed up and slow it down that is a really useful thing something that many many audio workstations do not have and need that is a very useful thing i forgot to mention these bits these are your new project your open project your save project so these are these buttons here you got your undo redo uh those buttons there are kind of what you get under these menus so like file you've got your save project under edit you've got your undo and so on uh this is a metronome turn that on press play get a metronome that goes in time with the beats you see every time that number changes we get a metronome sound so that is useful if you don't know what a metronome is you now do um auto crossfade these are just various editing tools you probably the only one you'll probably really change is this one uh, i'll explain what that does later the rest of them you'll probably keep the same whoops you'll probably keep the same for most of the time so we won't worry about that under the menus we'll get into the nitty gritty of what these do later on but under insert this is kind of where you insert media like a midi track so yeah that's put a midi track there for editing in this track if that was well it is midi track as well as an audio track something you can do in reaper quite cool you can have you don't need separate audio and midi tracks you can do them both on the same track so you could have an audio file play and then it's swapped to a midi track and then it resuming being an audio file quite a useful thing well it's not actually i don't think i've ever used it but it's there and it's a nice option in case you do want to use it and you may well do item is individual thing like we had that midi item there so under item that's ways of manipulating this under track you kind of see what that does that's for manipulating tracks and so on under options you have your preferences which is probably all your user um under that i use um the asio asio for all driver something i would recommend you download though it's not compulsory at the start so in a video that uses that i'll i'll go more into that anyway i think that should do it for the introduction i've showed you what reaper is and in the next episode i guess we will do a bit about um audio recording seems like a good place to start thank you for watching bye bye